Hey there, happy day 858 of What You Up To Now. Sharon Horn Elstrom here, documenting my journey as I transition from the brick and mortar corporate world to the online world. And what a journey it has been. Call this today okay then, because I did a little social experiment yesterday and I'm getting beat up a little bit from some of my connections and some of my friends saying, well, why would you do that? And I'm not apologizing for what, why I did it. I did it intentionally to do a test. I am always testing and tweaking myself to be a better human being. And one of the things I've noticed over a long time is that uh, social media can have a great positive effect on people's lives, but it also has a really negative effect on people's lives as well. There is more online bullying, meanness, name calling, and behaviors that I consider unkind and not socially acceptable than we would ever tolerate in our schools or our children being treated that way. And so why are adults behaving that way? And I did a little social experiment. I did a copy and paste. And one of my friends today is like, oh, you shouldn't do a copy and paste thing. But I did it on purpose because I wanted to test the reaction of my friends group, of my personal profile. I did this on Facebook um, to test and see how people responded. And as I expected, there were people on both sides. There were people on, and it isn't a two-sided issue. We think that all of of the world is just black and white in a two-sided issue. And of course it's not. It's like thinking that everybody's the same. No, there is every single one of us is unique and different and special. And I say we're all snowflakes because we're just like a snowflake. Every single one of us is unique and different. And what shows up in the world is just a teeny bit of who we really are. And that it's important to, to be who we really are. So I did the social experiment. It, it turned out the way I thought it would, which of course disappoints me because, you know, we have this personal bias where we think other people believe and think the way we do. And, and sometimes I personally am very naive and need to be reminded of that, which is part of why I test things and I did the experiment, was to remind me that um, we tend to surround ourselves with people that think like us. We tend to do what we've always done. We get, we're get we definitely habitual beings, right? We, we find a pattern in a group and our subconscious keeps us in that group. Our egos find a group and we stay in that group. And every once in a while, I like to step back and say, why do I even think that? Why do I even believe that? Where did that come from? Who does that belong to? And you know what? I've learned over the last decade that a lot of my thoughts, a lot of my feelings, a lot of my beliefs that put me in the dead zone had a sudden cardiac arrest and it was in a coma and frozen and all kinds of stuff. What put me there was that I was not living my own life. I was living the life that other people expected me to and what I should do, right? Everything was filtered through, well, how would my husband think about that? How would my family think about that? How will this make me look in my corporate environment or in my job or in my profession? You know, will this make me look professional? And following that sudden cardiac arrest, I realized that boom, it doesn't matter to anyone else how I look. What matters is how I look to me. And there's one of my dad's favorite poems, and I love it. Is it's and it's the wrong name, but they he called it. They, we call it the Man in the Mirror. And I looked it up when he passed away five years ago because it's it's such a powerful poem. And I encourage everyone. I should go look for the link. I've got the link somewhere saved in my computer, which is full of vast quantities of information. But love that poem because it reminds us that at the end of the day. We have to look at ourselves in the mirror and we have to know that the way we behaved each and every day is continually improving and getting better, but that we can look at ourselves in the mirror and still love ourselves. Anyway, so, okay then, no more social experiments for me, but it was it was interesting. I, I need to hop on my, my uh, Facebook account today and, and look at some of that and, or see what happened with the experiment, but there was enough last night that I don't really need to look at any more of it. Uh, so aside from that, get up and go challenge today, day four. And normally when I do the get up and go challenge, it, it, it was first a 30 day challenge, the whole month of April to help people deal with the pandemic. And then I did a five day challenge with it a couple of times just to test and teach people how they can use a framework to deal with any challenge, any situation, anything that comes up in their life, any problem, roadblock, difficulty that they're not sure how to deal with. If they use this process, if they use this framework, and I actually call it soap to scrub away the, the, the germs or whatever, or the, the anything that's bothering us, 
that they can use that and it, once it becomes an automatic part of you, every situation you look at, every problem, you automatically run through this just like any other habit or any other, um, it's just like becomes a habit or a belief, right? Something that runs in our subconscious that we don't even have to think about but it automatically gives us better results. Well, this time I'm doing this challenge by um, an amazing gentleman and, and group of 175,000 entrepreneurs to do my own personal challenge for 40 days. Well, you know, I always say yes, and then I figure out how I'm going to do it. So this challenge for the Get Up and Go Challenge is 40 days, and it's unfolding as I am going through it and going through it with several people. We are, it's becoming and morphing and, and becoming its own thing. So today, given what's going on in the world, and we talked about the seven whys we want what we want yesterday, that often brings up things from our past that we don't even realize are impacting us. We make decisions and choices based on maybe an experience that happened when we were like in second or third grade or before we were five. That's, as humans, we don't even know that things get locked into us and we make decisions based on that for, for the rest of our life until we realize, oh my God, I'm making decisions based on something that happened to me in second grade. And as a 60 year old woman, is that still right for me? Uh, maybe not. So on the, on the back of that, I wanted to talk about our core values and what really makes up the essence of who we are. And so I shared my five core values and I'm encouraging other people to do the same. Just, just list out what are your five core values. And maybe, it, you know, it's different for each and every one of us. There's no judgment or no, no guidance there. My five core values are my five core values. My kids each have different five core values. My ex-husband, my sisters, all of us even from the same environment have totally different core values. Like the five core values for each of my four sisters are different than my core values are for me. And we grew up in, in virtually the same environment, right? Or a very similar environment. So today, Get Up and Go Challenge 40, day four, all about your core values, top five core values. I probably should have done four since there's so many fours, but whether it's four or five or 10, we all default to a certain amount of, of you know values. And it's usually a handful, right? Usually under seven that impact us subconsciously and automatically. And sometimes we choose what those are, other times we don't. Um, I used to have a huge need for safety and security. I don't know where that came from. I don't know why I felt that way, but I was very risk adverse when I was younger. And it could probably have come from my, my parents went on date nights and we were left with a babysitter and I was scared that they weren't gonna come back or something. I don't know where it came from. I don't care, but I knew that I needed to release that dependence on there had to be safe security, you know, and all the risks had to be taken out of something before I would make a choice or a decision. I used to be terrible. I'm like a super fast decision maker now, but that was intentional. And it took me a while to come up with ways of becoming a fast decision maker uh, because I used to commiserate over everything. You know, we'd write a paper in school and the teacher would say, have three sources. I would have 15. It was ridiculous. I wouldn't make any choice or decision until all the ducks were in a row, literally ducks in a row, uh, and things like that. But over time, we change. So core values, very important. Uh, fun challenge today was about our monogram and, and finding a way to creatively create a monogram. It's for our backpack. Again, I picked that challenge and didn't realize that it was for six to nine-year-olds. But being a 60-year-old, I think I want to be a, a six to nine-year-old sometimes, especially after hanging out with my amazing granddaughter and realizing the energy and the delight and the potential through which a toddler or a young child sees the world because uh, you know after you get beaten up for 60 years a lot of that delight and creativity and wonder and curiosity gets beaten out of us and it's fun to hang out with somebody that reminds us of that it's fun to play games and it's fun to be creative and it's fun to make projects and do things and and realize what a big part of my life creativity has always been and how I've shoved that down and stifled it for decades but the fun challenge today was about creating a monogram. Day 149, I believe already. Can't believe 149, because I did not start this challenge at the beginning of the year. I think it started a little ways into it because I was finishing up. Last year's challenge was, was to do one thing every day that makes you happy. Definitely happier than I was last year, but I think I could probably do one thing every day to make me happy again, again this year for sure. But fun is more important this year because I definitely need some more fun in my life. Uh, what else is going on? I don't know. 
doing a ton of things right now, a ton of projects. We're working with a bunch of amazing new people, and that's always fun and exciting as well. If I can help you in any way, hit me up, ask in the comments below. If you, whatever your position, the, the Get Up and Go Challenge, I want to invite you to join us in that. It's all about making sure that you are better off in 40 days. I mean, massively better off in at least one area of your life. I'm going to address five areas of my life during the challenge just to set an example and show that you don't have to just address one area of your life to make changes and that we can make changes in more than one area of our life simultaneously. I know that goes against the belief that we must focus on one thing, but guess what? If we ignore any of the areas of our life, remember there's seven, for an extended period of time, we end up dead. Ask me how I know. All right, have an amazing day. I will be with you tomorrow to report in what's going on as I transition from the offline to the online world and help other people do the